Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about submodalities. Submodalities. Submodalities are the building blocks of our thoughts. Every single moment we have had, we have so much coming into our awareness and we filter that information based on who we are, where we're at, where we've been, our history, the programs that we have, the meta programs with the pro pro <laughs> programs beyond our programs. We distort, delete, and generalize all of this information and then we create a movie in our mind. The movie that's in your mind, those visions, the sounds, the feelings that you hear are made up of the things you see in your mind, hear in your mind, feel in your mind, and think in your mind. And that's that movie that's in our mind. And we've got a movie going on for absolutely everything. And that movie is built on our five senses, the things we see, say, taste, touch, and smell. Now, I don't know if you know, but the things that you think and the way you think those things makes an impact. For example, if you think about someone or something you don't like very much, there's probably a sense, a feeling that you feel about them in your body somewhere, a location, a sensation, a heat, a temperature, a movement. If you get a picture of that person in your mind, the qualities of that picture in your mind has different sub-modalities, different sub-components of the modality of the visual aspect. So it might be in a certain location, or it might be in a different color, or in color versus black and white. It might have a different size to it compared to somebody that you really, really like. So sub-modalities are the building blocks of our thoughts. And we have our, what we see, hear, feel, taste, touch, and smell. And each one of those aspects has different components to it or modalities, the sub-modalities. For example, as I mentioned before, the visions that we have in our mind. Some of them are in black and white. Some of them are in color. Some of them are in sepia or bright or dim. Some of the images we have are really big and some are really, really small. Some things are really close to us and some things are very far away. Even the feelings that we have, there's different locations in our body for those feelings. Different temperature or texture or movement or vibration. The sounds that we hear have different locations inside of us and outside of us. Different volumes, different tempos. I remember um, just, I think it was yesterday, could have been the day before. Um, one of my things on my list was to tidy and clean my house. And I just didn't want to, but there was this little voice that came from back here and it said, not going to clean itself, you know. I'm like, who's, boy, who's, who's telling me it's not going to clean my, itself? I think it was probably my mother's from when I was little, but it's back here. It's not going to clean itself, you know. And I'm pretty sure that's the facial expression that that voice would have as well. But that's the auditory submodality, the location, the tempo of that voice the volume of it or the pitch of it. And even if I have a picture of what that is, it's a little red ball and the location of it is over there. Some modalities are interesting because um, Steve and Connie Ray Andreas, who are some phenomenal NLPers in the world, they did a lot of work with submodalities and they were the ones that really started to play with and identify. If we start to shift, if we start to move around the voice that's in our mind and shift the tempo or the tonality or take that image of something that we're feeling overwhelmed with and start to shrink it and move it and start to change those submodalities. Guess what they found? When you can change your thoughts, you change your life. Think about that. If somebody's feeling overwhelmed by something, if you got a picture of overwhelm or something that you might be overwhelmed with, there's a good chance it's gonna be big and there's probably weight to it. And for me, as I'm even thinking about it, it's kind of coming down on my shoulders like this and it's big and heavy. If we can utilize those submodalities and change them, play with them and lighten it, make it light like a feather or a balloon and 
let it just kind of float off, if we can shrink it, if we can move the location of it, if we can push it away from us, strangely, that starts to shift the movie that's in our mind. Therefore, we start to delete, generalize, and distort in a different way, which means that we're filtering our world through different sub-modalities. I use sub-modalities a lot. They help me wake up in the morning because I start to shift my sub-modalities way before I get out of bed so that when I'm when I finally do open my eyes I'm alert and I'm awake if I have a goal that I think I want I shift my moda my sub modalities to make it more compelling a little bit brighter and closer if I'm feeling overwhelmed I shrink something down and push it off into the distance from myself if um, I, I'm just not in the mood for something, I shift my submodalities so that I become more in the mood for it. Or if it's time to sleep and I haven't yet gotten to the point where my mind and body is sleepy, then I start to shift my submodalities to move me into a state. Because not only does shifting those submodalities start us to distort, delete, generalize, and filter differently, but it cascades down, our physiology changes, our state changes, and ultimately our outcome, our behavior changes, simply because of the movie in our mind and the submodalities, the components, the building blocks of our thoughts. You are in charge of your mind and therefore your results. And when you change your thinking, you change your life. If you'd like more information about some modalities, let me know. We've got some great chapters on it in our 30 Days to NLP book. You can find that at 30daystonlp.com. It's written by myself and Lorelei Blythe. If you have questions that I can answer, please let me know. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. See you soon.